The time is now eight o'clock on the African tight skin drum. <laughs> Here is the news. The latest medical report on the country's first heart transplant operation is that both the recipient and the donor are doing well. <laughs> A recent survey shows that there are more Chinese-speaking people in China than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Tomorrow is a voting day for the president. For all those voters who are not familiar with the procedure to be adopted when casting the vote, the Minister of Internal Affairs has issued the following instructions. In the polling booth, there will be two black boxes. If you vote for the president, you must put your vote in the one black box. If you don't vote for the president, you will be put in the other black box. <laughs> in Parliament today, the government passed a bill regarding the electorate. All illiterate party members are not allowed to vote, but they may be elected. <laughs> America announced that the next moon project will include an African astronaut. The project will be known as Muntu. <laughs> and finally, here is the weather report. If it does not rain tomorrow, it will be fine. That news item reminded me of the astronauts who recently went to the moon. And in honour of those gentlemen, those brave men who were the first to step on the moon, I thought you might like to hear just a little bit of nonsense. The astronauts went for moon or bust. I must explain, before I start, that there was a lot of speculation about what the moon consisted of before they went there. Now we know, but there were all sorts of theories about what the moon consisted of. And one of them was that the moon was nothing but a big green cheese. <laughs> the astronauts went for moon or bust, and Dr. Von Braun said we hope and trust. You'll bring back samples of rock and dust. But please don't forget the green cheese. <laughs> green cheese for the astronaut. Is it camembert or roquefort? Green cheese for the astronaut. All systems go when it's green cheese. <laughs> When Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin went to the moon, you know, they were quite intent on bringing back the delightful scent of Danish blue and Gorgonzola. <laughs> Green cheese for the astronaut, is it camembert or roquefort? Green cheese for the astronaut When you're weightless in space You need green cheese <laughs> Now Mars is all set for 81 And the cheddar's there by the umpteenth ton And though they can't feed everyone They'll bring back a box of fromage barge. <laughs> Marge barge for the Houston lads. That'll get them off of their launching pads. 
Marge, barge for the Houston lads. Tranquility comes from fromage bars. <laughs> Have you imagined what it would be like for a fairly well-educated, well-read chap to explain to one of his less fortunate fellows all about the moon and the space race and astral travel and uh, going to the, to the stars? I think it would sound something like this. Lo Americans, now lo Russians, in a funa figure lapa heaven, before they die. But a low fly machine in Akona Figalapo, I call it in a Hamba Nalo rocket, funny Kalo Guy Fox. Low first one in a Figilapa in a Yuri Gagarin, in a Pumalapa Russia. Low second one in a Figilapa in a Pumalapa disunited states. Low Gamkaina in a Major Glenn Miller. But in low time, July 1969, three astronauts in a Hambili Lapa moon, Scotty in a ready in a Hambalapa launching pad, in a Gokolo white trousers, in a white shirt, in a white boots, Lapa's Kopukaena in a Fagalo goldfish bowl. Manjilo Munye in a Tatalo pump, Karo Basco, in a Tatalo valve. In a bop, bop in a lapa, do the lapa navel. And then it's a tch. <laughs> yeah, and then it's a tch, 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 tch. <laughs> in a pumpy was telling, manji in a pressurized. <laughs> manji in a quella lapa lift. Funny lapa Livingston house. In a pizzle of static. Double load rocket. In a corner, one rocket. I corner. In a corner, three stages. Funny colour old Dagwood sandwich. It's got in a figure of a pizzle, lapa in a corner of spacecraft. And a small one, funny colour picking in the car. Manji in a bullet or door, in a gena lapa pansy, in a shallow lapa dunlo pillow seats, in a bopolo seat belt, in a bumble long range walkie talkie foot. In a bus bus lapa control, in a kuma ready for lift off. Robots in a kuma right, the nenzolo down count. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lift off. Lo rocket in a kuma In a kuma tinenza down count footy. Ten, nine, eight. <laughs> Seven, six, five, before, three, two, one. Lift off. <laughs> Low rocket in a conamba. <laughs> in a kangela lapa picking in a window. In a bizalo mutu lapa launching pad. In a kuma, iwe! A lift off. <laughs> low moon to come a buzz in a coshuela low matches. In a coma second down, turn a low cigarette lighter. <laughs> low moon to it ends a motor rubble in a vaca panza lapa rocket. Low paraffin lapa vaca in a woof. Low rocket in a hamba pizzle, perpendicular. It's got in a figure lapa 50 miles in a sheer low first stage. It's got in a figure 100 miles in a sheer low second stage. It's got in a figure 150 miles, low astronaut in a bumble joystick. Mind you, in an low angle of dangle. A 
in a figalapa epileptical orbit. <laughs> Manjilo Munye in a puma, in a bulolo do in a puma, in a hamalapa outside, in ends a space walk, but in a zico heavy lapo, in ends a flying, vanegalo nyoni. <laughs> but in a corner law, in a corner law tambo, in a bopiwa lapa spacecraft, in a bopiwa footy lapa belt gaina, in a law until medical court. <laughs> Mind you, little astronaut in a corner lab outside in a tattered little camera gaena. In a picking one, Kodak Brownie. <laughs> in a tattered picky jazz, funny castle. Mind you, he's in a pera, in a gena footy lab spacecraft, in a Kia low door. Low navigator in a coma right. Mind you, we're going off at a tangent to the moon. For 48 hours, two days in a humble lab journey. But it's got a little time in a pera, in a figure lap moon. <laughs> In a gena lapa munye, low bus is strong arms na low bus dildrin. When she's got a figure lapa in a lala, for two hours in a lala. But manji in a hamba panzical steps, in a hamba downstairs, in a tata low, low left foot kaina and hands so. In a fucking lava moon. In a tattoo right foot. In a fucking lava moon footy. In a kangela. In a kruma. My goodness me. <laughs> no wonder the cow jumped over this place. <laughs> In a corner of picking in a plastic bag, in a tattle of stones, in a little stove, in a fucking packet of a bag, in a tattle of bag, in a fucking of spacecraft, in a tattle of picking in a flag footy, in a fucking of ground. Manji, in a hamba, in a figure of pizzle footy, in a figure of eagle, low muni spacecraft in a corner of a pizzle. It's got in a figure of in a kuma righty home, James, and don't spare the horses. <laughs> Two days footy. In a figure lapa atmosphere color earth. In a child low retro rocket, funny brakes. <laughs> Manji in a vula low umbrella guy in a footy, in a buya pansy, funny so. <laughs> in a figure lapa Pacific Ocean, do the lapa Hawaii. Low Pacific Ocean in a makuru stack, even bigger than a penguin pool. <laughs> Manjilo helicopters and a tattle of astronauts, Lano spacecraft, Gaena, in a Faga and a Lapa aircraft carrier. Low Paramount Chief, Carlo Dis United States, Mr. Nikis. <laughs> yeah, in a corner Lapa footy, in a Kangela and a Lofa Lucas, Gaena. <laughs> Manjilo three astronauts in a Buili footy Lapa air. The first men to set foot on the moon. You think they give them a special basera? You think they give them a medal? No. You know what they do? They give them 21 days CB. George, George Masikiwa went to a fancy dress ball. And during the course of the evening, they played the Paul Jonas. <laughs> and the girls were going clockwise, and the boys were going anti clockwise. And suddenly the music stopped. And there before George stood Suzuma Twetwe. <laughs> Dressed in vegetables. <laughs> she had potatoes and tomatoes and spring onions and leeks and green beans. She was covered in vegetables. And George said, Susie, what are you meant to be? And Susie said, don't be stupid. Can't you see I'm Irish stew? <laughs> Thank you.
And George said, ah, I see the Irish too. One of the brown dumplings is boiling over. <laughs> There were two Mafazis standing on the corner, and the RAR were marching past. I hope you're recording this, because <clears throat> it's very rude. <laughs> <clears throat> and the one said to the other, Violet, look at that lovely Sergeant Major. I would love to casserole him. And Violet said, Susie, don't be stupid. The word is not casserole, it's caress. She said, I don't care about that. I want to casserole him. Susie, you are misusing the English language. The word is not casserole, it is caress. Casserole has to do with the cooking. And the other one replied, yes, I know it's to do with the cooking. I looked it up in Mrs. Beaton's cookbook. And, it's, and it says... Do slowly for two hours. <laughs> there was an old lady out at Sipolilo who had a son. And one day he left home and he came into Salisbury. And she hadn't heard from him for about, oh, two or three weeks. And she got a little bit worried about what was happening. So she wrote to him inquiring about his health. And he wrote back, and I have a copy of his letter here. He said, My dear mother, I am in very good health. I must tell you about my new work. Because already I have secured for myself a position of a trust and responsibility. I deliver on my bicycle the produce of my employer, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> he sells everything in his shop, from the shoelaces to the tins of instant salsa. <laughs> it did not take me a long time to learn the rules of the road. Because they are very simple. If you wish to turn to the left... You put out your right hand. <laughs> and if you wish to turn to the right, you just close your eyes and turn. <laughs> the Rhodesian drivers are very, very good. And they are always testing their cars to make sure they work properly. <laughs> very often, in the traffic, I hear them testing their brakes behind me. My dear mother, I wish you could see the traffic lights. They are very pretty, always changing colors. <laughs> From red to green to amber. Sometimes I sit on my bicycle and I watch the lights changing. And the drivers behind me, they get very excited and they wave their hands. And they say, haven't they got any colors to suit you? But there are one or two things that make me very puzzled because I've got a copy of the Highwayman's Code. <laughs> and it says, at night time, you must wear something white so that the other users of the road can see you. Well, the other night in a Manico Road, I tried it because I put a white sheet over my head with the two holes for the eyes. <laughs> but everybody was screaming and running away from me. They also say in the Highwayman's Code, you must not hold on to other cyclists or any other vehicles. But sometimes this is very hard, because the other day, I got my front carrier caught in the rear bumper of a bus. <laughs> and I got a very fast ride to Dombashawa. <laughs> my dear.
dear mother wrote to me. She said, I hear in Salisbury, to cross the street you need a lot of nerve. Sibaldi Law's bad as well. Why, only last week little Nell was knocked down by a cow in our reserve. I replied, my mother dear, it's a really mush in Salisbury here. My bicycle, I ride all day in town. I give my signals properly, and the drivers wave their fists at me. They only stop when they have run me down. Lorries from Plum Tree, pedestrians from Harari. All join the traffic in a merry throng. I love the thrill of taking a headlong spill when some fast taxi hits me head on. So don't you worry, my mama. A bicycle will take you far, and there is not a puncture I can't fix. I also hold the record here for smashes coming from the rear. <laughs> the total now, I think, is 86. <laughs> and so I leave you with this thought. The danger here is almost not if you obey the rules and use your head. And now I must close for tonight. They've come to make my bandage tight. And bring me pills to my hospital bed. Some friends of mine had guests to dinner the other night. And on the menu was chicken. Now, they had a cook boy who was rather fond of the races. And he used to go to Borrowdale every Saturday afternoon. And this particular Saturday, he'd done his boots on a horse called Unmerciful Moon. <laughs> to the extent that he didn't have a penny left, you see, to buy himself food and rations. So while he was preparing the chicken, the temptation was too much for him. And he helped himself to a little piece. Anyway, dinner time arrived... And uh, they went in, sit, sat down around the table. And the chicken was brought in in all its splendor, golden brown and beautiful, with one leg. <laughs> well, the lady of the house was too polite to say anything in front of the guests. But she was fuming. She was absolutely furious. So after the meal, she went into the kitchen. And she said, Samson, why did that chicken only have one leg? And Samson said, Madam Zongaro chicken's in a corner one leg. <laughs> she said, Samson, chickens have two legs, and that chicken on the table had one leg. I want an explanation, please. He said, Madam, Scatawana Fona Bona Maningi chickens in a corner one leg. Come tomorrow at five o'clock, I will show you. She said, I'm going to do that, Samson. And she got up at half past four the next morning by setting the alarm clock, and she went through to the kitchen. And there was Samson waiting, and he said, We are, Madam. And he took her through the kitchen door to the hedge at the back. And they looked over, and there was the neighbor's chicken coop. And all the chickens were standing fast asleep on one leg. <laughs> so she looked at the chickens, and she looked at Samson... And she looked back at the chickens and she went, shoo! And all the chickens shot up in a flurry and started running around on two legs. She said, there you are, Samson. Chickens have two legs. He said, oh, madam, in Indaba, why didn't you say shoo to the chicken on the plate? <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen... With the aid of Mr. Dennis King, we're going to give you some idea of what an African quiz program sounds like on the air. Hello, hello, good evening, and welcome to our new quiz show. 
which is brought to you by Rabbit's Rapid Razor Blades. <laughs> this is the show where you can win lots of money. And for every contestant who gives the correct password, which is the, ah, that was a close shave. <laughs> He will receive two packets. Yes, two packets of Rabbit's Rapid Razor Blades. But now, on with the show. Rabbit's proudly present their new show, Double Your Bunny. <laughs> uh, I'm not ready for you yet, Bernard. Just wait a minute. Here's the first contestant, whose name is Bernard. Hello, Bernard, and welcome to the show. Uh, that was a close shave. Yes, it was a close shave. It's quite right, the password there. And here are your two packets of Rabbit's Rapid Razor Blades. Well, thank you. Now then, Bernard, all you have to do on this program is to answer three of the four jackpot questions correctly. And then you can go to the jackpot, which today stands at... 13 and sixpence. But also remember that for each question that you answer correctly, you receive one ticket. Now, here's your big chance to make some money, right, Bernard? <laughs> Listen very carefully. What is the English metric equivalent to one inch? 25.399 millimeters. That's quite right. Give him a big hand. It's quite right. <laughs> Now, for the second question, this is a geography, Bernard. What is this? There is a town in Switzerland called Interlaken. What does this mean? Between the lakes. Between the lakes is correct. Give him a big hand. <laughs> Bernard, you only have to answer one more question to be able to go for the jackpot. Do you feel excited? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, he feels excited. Now then, Bernard, your next question is this. This is a poetry, Bernard. Who wrote these famous lines? Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert. Shelley, 1792 to 1822. That's quite right. That's quite... It was indeed Shelley from 1792 to 1822. That's well done, Bernard. Now you have a chance to go for the jackpot, which stands at 13 and 6 pence. Remember, you've already won in 9 pence. <laughs> and you have your two packets of razor blades. Now, which letter in rabbits would you like to choose? I would like to choose the letter T. Ah, the letter T in rabbits. Why do you choose that letter, Bernard? Because I think there may be a treasure inside. A treasure? I say, hey. <laughs> Such as the jackpot, right. Here is the envelope with the jackpot question. So, for 13 and 6 pence, what is the capital of Rhodesia? Concession by Missouri. <laughs> That's a very hard luck, Bernard. You are not far out, only about 30 miles. <laughs> but you've won in nine pence on the show for answering the three questions correctly and your two packets of razor blades. Thank you for coming on the show and give him a big hand. Some of these jackpot questions are rather hard, aren't they? <laughs> but now for the next contestant, whose name is Edwin. Good evening, Edwin. Good evening. What about the password, Edwin? Ah, that was a close shave, wasn't ah, it? That's a very, <laughs> Edwin, that was a very close shave, but I wanted to disqualify you. <laughs> Here's your two packets of razor blades, and welcome to the show. Now, Edwin, tell me, what do you do for a living? I am studying. Studying, that's very good. What are you studying, Edwin? Trigonometry. <laughs> that's a very nice too. Would you like to tell the audience, in your own words, of course, what is this? 
Ach, yes, for it is the science of the relations between the sides and the angles of triangles. Oh, that's quite... I was about to say that myself. <laughs> now then, Edwin, the jackpot stands at 13 and sixpence. And here is your first question. Firstly, for one ticky, in the multiplication table, what is the five times six? 31. No, no, Edwin, you're very close, but you failed to answer the question correctly because it is, in fact, 30. Damn it. <laughs> That's a very hard luck, but now here's a very important message from the sponsor. How many times a day do you say to yourself, while driving your car or riding your bicycle, Ah, that was a close shave. <laughs> How many times do you say that when you face your reflection in the mirror in the morning? Put away the pen knife and the scissors. <laughs> and go for rabbits, rapid razor blades, and be a cut above the average. <laughs> For each blade will last you two, yes, two shades. And in dealing with the hairs, go for rabbits. The first... <laughs> the first acting blade with the double-edged action. Start the day the rabbit's way for a really close shave. And that, that's it for tonight, folks. But remember to tune in at the same time next week when it may be your turn to double your bunny, presented by Rabbit's Rapid Razor Blades, the sharpest people in town. Yeah.